Hi, welcome to this first new video on retrieval augmented generation where I'm going to show you some experiment I'm doing with large language model and natural language processing. And in this series of video, I'd like to introduce you in how you can take uh, one or more document, PDF, DOCX, whatever, and being able to chat with a large language model into the content of the document. All the examples will be done mainly in C Sharp, and I have a company project you can find on GitHub, link below in the description of the video. And everything is um, public, the repository is open source, so you can download and try the code by yourself. The very first step is taking your document and being able to extract the text from your document and subdivide into segments and segment will be used to pass to a large language model. So the purpose is find a library that makes possible to extract text from any file format. And this library is called Tika. It's a Java library that can integrate it easily into your C Sharp program. In this first part, we will learn how to use a pretty much uh, one of the best library you can have written in Java to extract text from any document format. It's called Tika. It's uh, under the Apache Foundation. So you start with a PDF or whatever. You then pass this document to Tika. Tika will extract the text. And then finally, I'm going to store the text inside the Mongo database because I don't want to use Tika each time I need to analyze a document. I want to analyze only one time, I want to save into a document, and I want to use all the feature of the document database like MongoDB to allow me to store, retrieve, and search data inside what I've extracted with Tika. I'm not going to show you all the steps you need to create an Atlas database, but basically you need to register for Atlas, create a project, then create some user to access database, and then you need to create a database deployment. And when you create deployment, you have the option to create a deployment with some sort of um, features, okay? And all the various um, deployment are, uh, are going to cost you, except the first one is called M0 and it's free. To choose a free database, you need to click Shared. And with Shared, you will have um, cluster tiers and you have an M0. And now I cannot create another M0 because I've already created one, but this is free. And then you can have more uh, space, like two gigabyte uh, if you need more space and you have $9 a month, so you can uh, make your database grow. But you always have the option to have one version of the database completely free. Now, after you configure your database file and the location of Tika, where you extracted Tika.jar in your system, you have uh, details on how you can configure the software into the README file. You can run the program and go to the doc sample one, and this is the part I'm using for this demo. And uh, the scenario is I have a lot of PDF books that I've bought with uh, Humble Bundle. Humble Bundle is exceptional, but in the end, I have so many books that I had not the time to read every book. So I need to find information. And I know that some of the books contains the information to solve one of my questions. But the problem is I don't know the book, or I know that a specific book has a, a, a answer to my question, but I don't want to read all the book or uh, trying to find the uh, answer myself. I want large language model to help myself. In this situation, I'm taking the advanced API security book and I press load from disk. So this button does a couple of things. Uh, it try to load the document from the database if it's already in the database, if it's not in the database, and the ID of the document is simply the name of the file. Uh, since the database is completely empty, now I'm going to load the file with Tika, and Tika is capable of extracting the various page of the document, and now I have all the pages of the document extracted from me by Tika, and I can press Show Details and look at the content that was extracted by Tika Library. 
The class that performs all the work is called TK Instructor and I don't want to get into the detail. The method you can look is the get HTML content async in which you can see that I'm not doing anything different than starting uh, java.exe, the standard Java executable and passing uh, the jar file as a single argument and then dash h that gives the uh, path to the input file. And then I'm simply going to um, call start a process and get the output because Tika is very simple. You start the jar file, you give the file and it will output into the standard output all the content of the uh, file, all the text that Tika can extract. It has also a metadata where it try to extract some metadata and then all the pages in HTML format. So I'm simply going to extract and store inside MongoDB. Now I'm starting again the program and I press uh, load from disk and uh, the button is not so correct. Uh, as you can see, the document is loaded really faster because this time I've loaded it from Mongo. If I'm going to look at the content of my Mongo database, a new database called DocSample v1 appeared and in which I have one document that contains all the metadata and where the ID is simply the name of the file, so it's nothing more complex. And then I have single document pages that are a series of uh, page document which the HTML content extracted by Tika. And thanks to MongoDB, that is a document database, I don't need to make uh, a decide a schema or anything else. I'm just saving data inside the database without any worrying about, without any problem for a schema, uh, data length, or so on. Now, after I've extracted text with Tika, I need to clean the text and we will see what I mean for cleaning and then we need to divide the text in segment because uh, we need to pass this content to a large language model. As you can know, a large language model, GPT 3.5 or GPT 4, each one has a limiting number of tokens it can process. So you cannot and you will not pass the entire text extracted from your document to a single call because it will exceed the number of the token. So you need to take all the text of the document and subdivide it into small chunk. And usually when you choose the length of the chunk, you can use a length in token, where token is the number of uh, pieces of text that a large language model can purchase. A uh, token is not a word, a word can be composed by more token, but it's not important to go into the detail. You have a library that can give you an idea, can give you the number of token a piece of text is composed by, and so you need to take all the text of your document and start segmenting it. Remember that the purpose of subdividing the text of the document into segment is to pass to a large language model to answer your question. And so you need to divide into segments where you know that the length of the segment allows you to pass more than one segment into a single call to a large language model. And we will see in the future videos why this is important. Since I'm interacting with GPT, I use supporting of the Tik token library in C Sharp and it is an agate package, so I can use this library to take a piece of text and know how many token it contains. So I can uh, use this library to segment the original text, the entire book, into segment of a fixed token length. Now to understand what I mean about cleaning, let's press the segment, uh, the update token count button and it will um, update the count of token for all the pages extracted by Tika and it will save again the data in MongoDB so I have the number of tokens stored. And as you can see, there are some strange things because, uh, you know, the number of token you are expecting the page to be, it's uh, not exceeding 1,000, so we have 20,000 tokens. So how is possible? If you show the detail, you see that Tika extracted a lot of uh, weird Unicode character, and that is pretty much common. Sometimes the content of the PDF, the content of the file, it's complex, and Tika extracts a lot of 
garbage. So when you perform the segmentation, so the subdividing all your text into segments, you need also to do a little bit of cleaning. The project contains a class called Segmenter, uh, whose purpose is to subdivide uh, all the content of a document into segments. It is not uh, a perfect and beautiful and fast code, but it's uh, simple and it, it, it will uh, make you understand how it's uh, how this uh, operation is performed. Usually you have a couple of parameters when you want to segment a text. One is how length how length a uh, text that should be. So usually a number of token you want the segment to be uh, length. And the other parameter is how each segment will overlap. And let's see the result of segmenting that library, that, that book, and let me explain you what overlap is. After I loaded the document with Thika, if you go onto the raw document, you can see the raw content of the page. Then you go on the segment, uh, it's empty. It, you just press segment button, wait a little bit because the routine is not optimized and you will have all of uh, the content of the document subdivided into chunk of text called segment, approximately 400 tokens length. And this piece of text is the piece of text that can be passed to a large language model to answer your question. To explain overlap, let's see this, um, this segment. The ending text is STS with a delegate access, blah, blah, blah. And you can see that this is the very beginning of the subsequent segment. So the idea is, uh, since you don't know exactly how the text is formed, you should take an, in, an entire phrase or entire piece of the text that is consistent, but uh, it, it is complex. So if you are going to do an heuristic where you subdivide your all of your text into segments of a fixed length, it is a good practice to have some overlap text so you can have uh, the end of a segment is the beginning of the other segment, so it is much more possible that you don't completely uh, cut a phrase or, or a piece of text. This is uh, an heuristic. There are a lot of better way of doing this, but this is enough for uh, my sample just to give you the idea on uh, how you are working with text. As usual, after I subdivided the document into segment, I've saved all the content in another collection in MongoDB Atlas, so I can have all of my segment well indexed into my database. As you can see, I simply specify the token count, the content, and the single document ID, the ID of the document that uh, contains this segment, so I can know which is the source. I've also included the page number as a reference, so I can give you the user some information about I found what you're searching inside that document and in, in this page. And this pretty much concludes this first video where you learned how to use Tika to extract text from a document and use a simple segmenter class to subdivide the text into segment and storing everything inside a Atlas database, a MongoDB database to have it immediately available for searching to pass as a large language model. The database will be your long-term memory. And see you in the next video, where we will go a little bit deeper into the realm of searching information.